Hi, in this video we are going to do an exam question walkthrough on a question that came up on the experiment, the mandatory experiment, which is to measure the relative molecular mass of a volatile liquid. So hopefully you guys have done this experiment and you remember the details of it. Uh, if not, then I would suggest maybe have, go and have a quick refresh of it and then close over, uh, close over whatever diagrams and notes you have. Do that now. All right, so back to the question. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you guys to uh, very quickly have a read of the blurb here at the top by yourselves. Read there in silence. Pause the video and do that now. I want to point out a few things to you here, so I'm not going to read it for you, but I just want to point out that obviously the first sentence explains what the experiment is. Uh, it mentions volatile liquid, which we may have to explain later on. Uh, and it says it's vaporized at a given temperature and pressure and its volume is measured. This is the mass of the sample is also measured. So all the things that we would have done during an experiment. It then gives you an equation, PV equals NRT. Okay, it says the number of moles in a liquid is calculated using that equation. Now we may have to do that later on, I'm guessing just from what it's doing, but look, it's actually giving you the equation, which is nice. And from this, then the relative molecular mass of that liquid is calculated. So first find the number of moles, then find the molecular mass. All that is important, maybe important in our question later on. All right, let's jump into the actual task of what we actually have to do here in the question. So part A, pretty straightforward. It's a definition. What is a volatile liquid? All right, so uh, we'll not talk too much more about this. Most of you guys should remember what a volatile liquid is. It's a definition that you should have learned. Pause the video, write down what is a volatile liquid. All right, well, just to give you some kind of idea here, uh, as a recap, if your teacher hasn't explained this to you or you're not sure, if we have a beaker of a liquid, we know that we could take it up, say if this is water, and we take it and we heat it up. So this is a flame underneath and we heat it up and we add heat to it until it starts to boil. Uh, if we were to stick a thermometer in there and once we get bubbles and this is boiling away, we say that the liquid water is turning into a vapor. What temperature does that happen at? That's at the boiling point. So this is a thermometer. And if we measure for water, this will be 100 degrees Celsius. Generally. Uh, a volatile liquid is one that has a boiling point lower than this. And this is the low, the more low it is, less than 100, the more volatile it is. So if something uh, starts to vaporize, turn into a gas at, say, 35 degrees C, well, we would say that this is volatile. So volatile means it's easily vaporized or it's a liquid with a low boiling point. So that's what we mean here. What does volatile liquid mean? It's a liquid with a low boiling point. Well done if you said something like that. If you said liquid that's easy to vaporize, then that would be okay too. So a liquid with a low boiling point. That was a very easy five marks. And you'd be surprised when this question comes up, this experiment, how often they ask that. They pretty much ask that definition every time. So a liquid with a low boiling point is what a volatile liquid is. All right, let's jump into the second one. All right, so this is a big question here. So it says describe the aid of the label diagram with the aid. Now that doesn't, what this, this is very specific. That doesn't mean that the diagram is worth the whole marks. Well, just a straightforward diagram anyway. You're describing, there's two things here. Describe the experiment with the aid of a label diagram. So the label diagram is important. It has to be labeled. Otherwise you're gonna lose some of the marks, but it has to be a description of the experiment. Okay, so describe with the aid of a label diagram how you would carry out the, exper the experiment to determine the relative molecular mass of a volatile liquid. Very important detail coming next. From your description, it should be clear how the mass was measured. So I'm going to say this is one. How the volume was measured. You can treat this as a separate thing if you like. And how the temperature was measured. That's where the majority of the marks are going to be. It should be clear from your diagram and your description both that how you did each of those three things. So don't think the marks are all just about, oh, and I draw a nice diagram, what it looks like with the conical flask in the beaker, and that's it. And that'll give me the marks. Brilliant. 21 marks for that. No, there's a lot of detail here. Okay. So from that, breaking that down, what I want you to do is I want you to try and do part two, your description of the experiment using a labeled diagram. So the first thing I'm going to get you to do is draw a basic labeled diagram do that now please pause the video do a basic label diagram okay so i'm not sure what you included but what i want to think about is have i included some detail in the diagram which describes how i measured the mass of the volatile liquid 
So have I included the equipment and maybe a description of the steps? How do I get the mass of the actual volatile liquid at the end? Pause the video and describe using annotations or bullet points in the description. How did you get that? The second thing is how did you get the volume of the gas? Have you described in detail how you calculated the volume? And then the third thing is, have you described how you calculate the temperature? So either drawn it in and annotated that piece of equipment or you have described it with words. All right, so the first thing we wanna know is that for this year, you're getting three marks only for the label, the main label diagram bit, okay? Now, what is the main label diagram bit? Well, the main label diagram bit is, looks like this. We have, sorry, I'll draw it in black. This is hopefully something that you did. And again, you have, sorry, if you haven't already tried to do this diagram, pause the video and do it now, guys. Don't be waiting for me. I'm giving you opportunities as we go along to pause and do it. You have to do that. Don't be sitting waiting for me to do it for you. We'll learn nothing from that. You're wasting your time. Okay, so we need a conical flask. So I'm gonna draw a conical flask like this. Conical flask. And it needs to be in a water bath. with water at least halfway up the flask. Okay, so I'm gonna label those two things, water bath and conical flask. Okay, if you didn't do that, pause the video and add that detail now. The next thing is what's inside the flask, pause the video and draw that. Okay, what's inside the flask is this very small bit of our volatile liquid. Okay, volatile liquid. Uh, you may have named that liquid. I don't wanna do that yet because that's actually one of the next questions. But if you named that liquid correctly, well done. And I will go come back to this later when we actually have to name it for the next part of the question, volatile liquid. We also would have had a lid, which was made of tin foil and you should draw that. So foil cap. And our foil cap, we would have made a pinhole in it. So a little hole just here. And this is to let the pressure inside the flask and outside the flask equalize. So as we heat the vapor and it turns into a gas, the pressure will rise. And some of that gas, as the particles say, fill up the container, some of that gas will leave the container as the pressure inside gets too high. Now there's also pressure outside from the air in the room pushing back. And when the forces of those arrows are the same size, well, then the particles inside the flask will stop moving to the outside of the flask. So they only get pushed out when the pressure is too high inside. When they're equal, so the pressure in the room is equal to the pressure in the flask, then the particles in the flask will stop leaving the flask. Okay, now that's not really important there. What is important is that you label that this here is a pinhole. All right, so that there is getting your first three marks, lads, out of the 21 to have that level of detail there, okay? Now, the next thing that I asked to include is how can you find the mass of the volatile liquid? Okay, so hopefully here you had a mass balance drawn. That's how we get the mass of anything. We would have a mass balance like this. And we would have our flask on it at different stages of the experiment, measuring the mass with the cap and the band, and we measure it before when it's empty and then after when it's got the condensed vapor in it, okay? So this is a mass balance, I'm gonna label it. Now this isn't really what's important here because I can't see from this diagram just what this mass balance is being used for. So this is where it's described with the aid of a label diagram. So how do we use the mass balance? So pause the video, what do we do at the start with the mass balance? Pause the video, write it down. Okay, so what we did is we got the mass, get the mass of the flask and the foil when it's empty. And rubber band, you can say if you like. Okay, that's in the beginning. What do we do at the end? Pause the video, write it down. Okay, well, Actually, before we get to the end, what were the steps we did in the, with the flask? Sorry, I should say, what do we do with the flask then after we got the mass? Okay, 
So we would have added the liquid and heat as in the diagram. Okay, so maybe we need to add a source of heat here. So here I'm gonna put a hot plate and label it. This is a hot plate to heat us up. Okay, so here I'm putting a hot plate. So add a diagram, uh, sorry, add the liquid and heat as in diagram. Uh, when do we stop? Pause the video and write it down. Okay, so we stop when the liquid vaporizes. Stop when liquid has vaporized. So no liquid left in the container. Now what liquid am I talking about? I'm not talking about this water. I'm not talking about this water here. I'm talking about this volatile liquid here. Okay, that's important just to clarify. Okay, start when the liquid vaporizes and then what do we do? Pause the video and write down what's the next step. Okay, so hopefully what you said is you will cool the flask down. Cool the flask. And what this allows is for the gas inside to recondense into a vapor. And then we put it back on the mass balance and weigh it again, get the new mass. So get the mass of the flask plus vapor, con or sorry, condensed vapor plus cap plus band. Okay, and then pause the video now and write down how do we get the mass of the vapor from that. Okay, so hopefully you said you would subtract, subtract, to get the mass of the vapor. All right, so that's the mass dealt with, and that was actually worth 12 mounts, believe it or not. So you need quite a lot of detail in here. So I'm seeing that this here was worth three, then uh, this here was worth three. Uh, so these three together were worth three. Then this bit was uh, these two. So cool and reweigh was worth three. And then finally, the subtraction was worth three. So 12 marks out of 21 going for this section. So if you didn't adequately explain how to do the experiment with the, uh, with the different methods of finding the masses, then you weren't going to get a lot of the marks here. You're going to lose a lot of them. All right, let's add some detail about how we got the temperature. Okay, so add something to the diagram over here and uh, add a step in about how we got the temperature. So if you like here, we can actually keep this separate. If you want, you could discuss here. This is how we got the mass. What about the temperature? Pause the video and add something to the diagram and then describe uh, how you got the temperature. All right, so what we did here is I'm taking, I'm going back to my original diagram and I'm adding in a thermometer. I'm just labeling it. It's not a very good thermometer. It doesn't matter so long as it's labeled. Thermometer. Okay, and back here, uh, we, uh, we got the thermometer by uh, use the thermometer to read the temperature. That's all we did. Use the thermometer to measure the temperature of the water bath. The water. And whatever the temperature of the water is, well, that's heating up the flask, so it's going to be the same temperature in the flask. All right, so what about how we got volume? Now, again, you can add a separate diagram here and then explain it, or you can just explain it, okay? Don't think it really matters too much here. Pause the video and do that now. All right, so to get the volume, we, at the very end, what we would have done is fill conical flask to the brim, to the brim, and pour into graduated cylinder cylinder to get the volume, something like this. So here is a graduate cylinder or a measuring cylinder with its lines on it like that. And you would have filled up your conical flask to the very brim with water just till it was about to overflow. 
So it's built right All of this is full to the very top. And then you pour it in here and you find out how high up it goes. And then you just look. And you write down the volume. Whatever the volume is here, you write it down. So that's how you get the volume of the flask. Whatever the volume of the flask is, well, we know what gases do when they, when, sorry, we know what happens to gases. They fill out to spread the container. So that means that the volume was exactly equal to the size of the flask. Okay, so uh, you could have this label diagram here to find the volume, or you could have described it over here. I would always suggest at least a description and then some diagrams with, if you like. Okay, but at least a description. Diagrams back up, but um, you do, uh, sorry, the diagrams back up what you're saying, but you have to have the description in place, first of all. all right, let's go back to the question because we're tight for time. The next one for six marks is, how may the pressure be measured? So we've done all the things. We've measured the volume, the mass, the uh, temperature. We haven't talked about pressure. Okay, so let's look now together at part C. So can you recall from your experiment, how exactly did you go about measuring the pressure? Now it's not complicated here, but you do need to know the name of a piece of equipment. Pause the video and write this down. Okay, it's pretty simple. You just read it from a piece of equipment called a barometer. So a barometer is what's used for measuring pressure. It's the piece of equipment. You could have also used a digital device called a pressure sensor. To be honest, uh, with my classes, when we do this, we just download an app on our phones or on our, we have tablets in class. We download uh, an app, which is a pressure sensor app or what we call a barometer app. We open it up and it tells us what the pressure in the room is. We just use that because atmospheric pressure is the same as the pressure in the flask because we have atmosphere, which is gas outside. This is the air pushing in with a certain pressure. And that's the pressure you're measuring when you open your barometer and you have equal pressure pushing out of the flask. So the pressure in the flask equals the pressure outside the flask because of the pinhole. Without the pinhole, that wouldn't be true. Then the pressure inside the flask could be higher because uh, you're not letting any gas escape. But once you let the gas escape and you equalize the pressures, then the pressure in the room is equal to the pressure in the flask. Next bit, let's read what the last bit is. Okay, we're into calculations now. Okay, so it says in an experiment to measure the relative molecular uh, mass of a volatile liquid, you've given 0 0.275 grams. So here is a number of grams of the liquid. And it was pressurized and it gives you a temperature in Celsius. Uh, and the volume occupied was found to be, and the pressure was. So pretty straightforward, I think, what we're going to have to do here. And if you even went back up, it told you that we calculated the number of moles using this equation, PV equals NRT. So most of you should be able to have a go at this now, D and D. First of all, finding the number of moles N uh, from, uh, in this particular uh, experiment. So find an N, the number of moles. Now, be careful. There are some conversions in here. So read them carefully. Begin by writing down what data we have and begin by converting them to the SI units and then solve for N. Once you have N, the number of moles, should be easy to find the molecular mass. Okay, so pause the video. Let's have a go at D. Most of us should be able for this now. Okay, so if you weren't able, you didn't know how to get started, or you're missing something, watch along until you find what you're missing and then pause and finish off, okay? Always look at the pause and finish it yourself. Okay, so what do we need? We need uh, P, V, N, or, and T, all right? So from our data, which of these do we know? Which of these do we not know? All right, so I'm looking at my question. I'm seeing pressure is one by 10 to the five Pascals. Pascals is SI unit, so that's good. So I've got one by 10 to the five. Hopefully that's what you did. Volume, it says it was found to be 95 cm cubed. So volume is 95 cm cubed. This is not SI units. And hopefully you identified this will have to be converted to meters cubed. So we need to go cm cubed to meters cubed. All right. Uh, next one, N. That's what we're trying to find. Look, calculate the number of moles. So this is going to be our question mark. Or is given to you on the front of the exam paper, it's 8.3. And if you were stuck with that one and you couldn't remember how to get or, 
It's always on the front of the exam paper. It's a constant. It always has the same value, 8.3. So now you can pause the video and finish this, hopefully, if that's all that you were stuck with. T is temperature, and it's 97 degrees C. That's not in SI units. So what we need to do is we need to go from degrees C to Kelvin. So we need to do this conversion and this conversion before you can go any further. If you haven't already done that, then pause the video, do them conversions now. Okay, so hopefully you remember that we, if we have centimeters cubed and we want to convert to meters cubed, we need to set up a fraction like this that has, centime sorry, that has centimeters cubed on the bottom and meters cubed on the top. So we can cancel centimeters cubed and centimeters cubed and leave ourselves with meters cubed, which is what we want in our answer. So first of all, we write down what we're starting with. We have 95 cm cubed. And the next thing is what's the relationship between centimeters cubed and meters cubed? This is something you just have to know. All right, so this is one meter cubed has one by 10 to the six centimeters cubed or one million of these centimeters cubed. So for every one meter cubed, there are a million or one by 10 to the six centimeters cubed. So pause the video, go ahead and do this now. All right, so what I'm getting here is I'm getting 9.5 by 10 at a minus five meters cubed. That's what you should have your set. Some won't be right if you don't have that. All right, for this one, uh, the conversion is much more straightforward. You take your Celsius and you add 273. So most of my students would definitely be familiar with that. 97 times by 273, and they'd be very confident with that, and you should be very confident too. So 97 plus 273 and you should get 370 Kelvin. Right, now that you know that, all the conversions are done, that's the hard bit done, you just have to solve for N. Okay, so again, another chance to pause the video here and do it yourself. Right, remember in our equation is PV equals N or T, and we want to solve for N. Again, another chance to pause this and rearrange it to get N. Right, what you should be doing here is making a denominator to remove or, from N and to remove T from N. And you also have to do the same on the other side, make a denominator with R and T. So now we've got N equals P, V over R, T. Plug in your values. P is, we just said was one by 10 to the five. V we said was 9.5 by 10 to the minus five. All over R is 8.3. And T is 370. So I'm going to go ahead, put that in the calculator, and find out what N is. Over 8.3 times by 370. The answer I'm getting is 3.093, and I'm going to stop there. I'm going to round it to that, and then times by 10 to the minus 3, and this is moles, because we'll find an N. 3.093 by 10 to the minus 3 moles. Um, yeah, that is the correct answer there. Perfect. Uh, and then we are looking at the next thing. It says calculate the relative molecular mass of a liquid. So we're on to part E. E. Okay, now the first thing I would like you to do is write down what units of relative molecular mass. If I was giving you units for relative molecular mass, what would it be? It would be 10 something. What would, what would the unit be? Pause the video and write that down if you know. Okay, so the molar mass or the relative molecular mass is measured in grams per mole. Hmm. Okay, now I've already got an amount of moles. Now, what is the corresponding amount of grams? Well, if I have this many moles, I was told that this came from a mass of 0 0.275 grams. So now that we know that, we know the mass in grams and we know the number of moles for that mass should be able to express this as an MR. So pause the video and write this down now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is write down our mass. Our mass was 0 0.275 grams. 
divided by, well, there was 0 0.275 grams for this many moles. So 3.093 by 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now notice there's no units to cancel out here, which means my final unit is going to be grams over mole. Exactly what I wanted here. So I've done my sum right here. I've got this many grams for this many moles. And once I put this into my fraction, or into my calculator, it's going to simplify for me what the molecular mass is. So on my calculator, 0 0.275 over 3.093 times 10 to the minus 3. When I do that, I'm getting a molecular mass of 88.91 grams per mole. And that is how you calculate the relative molecular mass of a liquid. You need to know the mass of the liquid and how many moles that equal to. And that's it. All right. So hopefully, guys, you found this video useful. Most of these, uh, most of any exam question that comes up about this experiment, it's going to be very samey. They're going to want to know about the procedure. They're going to want to know about the diagram. They want to know how you measure temperature, how you measure pressure, how you measure volume, and how you measure the mass of the volatile liquid. And then they're going to want you to work out what the, how many moles you had of the liquid, and then from there, the MR. Pretty straightforward. So I hope you found this experiment uh, question. I hope you found this video useful. If you could leave a like, it could help other students to find the video. Uh, and I hope that, uh, that, it, that it helps you going forward. I'll see you in the next video.